Hello there. In this video we're going to introduce a particular special function known as the metallic leffler function that has a very deep connection to a variety of different elementary functions that you should already be familiar with, such as trigonometric functions, hyperbolic functions, rational functions, exponential functions, and it also has some connections with all of these functions with derivatives and also integrals. So in this video we're going to define and discuss some basic properties of this metallic leffler function. Alright, so to begin, let us define the metallic leffler function. So we're going to denote it, denote it by an M, sort of merged with an L, and it's going to have two parameters, alpha and beta, and let us assume it's a function of x. And the metallic leffler function of x is defined to be equal to the sum from k is equal to 0 to infinity of x to the power of k all divided by gamma of alpha k plus beta. So in a way it's almost like a um, power series or a Taylor series for a particular function, right? Where 1 over gamma alpha k plus beta um, is sort of like the uh, constant of the power series. Now, for this video, and also the next, we're only going to be focusing on the one parameter Mittag-Leffler function. In particular, Mittag-Leffler of alpha of x is going to be equal to the sum from k is equal to 0 to infinity of x to the k, all divided by gamma of alpha k plus 1. So we're going to let beta be equal to 1. So this is going to be the dual parameter Mittag-Leffler function alpha beta evaluated at beta is equal to 1. So every time you see metagleffler alpha of x, that's focusing on the uh, parameter in front of the indice inside of the gamma function k. Right? So this is the function that we're going to be focusing on in terms of the properties. So let's start off with some basic uh, properties of metagleffler. So example 1, let us find a nice representation for the metagleffler of 0 of x. Let's see what function this corresponds to. So if we let alpha be equal to 0, we have 0 times k. That's going to be 0 plus 1 is 1, and we know gamma 1 is 0 factorial, which is 1. So this is just precisely equal to the sum from k is equal to 0 to infinity of x to the power of k. And provided that x is in between 0 and 1 in terms of its absolute value, we know this converges to the function 1 over 1 minus x. And this is provided that the absolute value of x lies in between 0 and 1. Let us look at another Mittag-Leffler function. Let us consider Mittag-Leffler of 1 of x. So this is going to be equal to the sum from k is equal to 0 to infinity of x to the power of k. So the parameter in front of k is 1, so that's going to be k, gamma k plus 1. So we know that gamma k plus 1 is the same thing as k factorial, and this power series should look familiar, this is just the exponential function e to the x. Right? So already we have a rational function and an exponential function. So let's continue this sequence and see what happens. So let us find out Metag-Leffler of 3. This is going to be equal to the sum from k is equal to 0 to infinity of x to the power of k, all divided by gamma 2k plus 1. So again, gamma 2k plus 1 is the same thing as 2k factorial. So let's just write that. So this is x to the 2, x to the k, all over 2k, the quantity, factorial. And I'm going to see if I can represent the exponent on x also as 2k. Then we can work with it better there. So this is going to be equal to the square root of x to the power 2k, all over 2k factorial. And if we let u be equal to the square root of x, then this is just precisely equal to the sum from k is equal to 0 to infinity of u to the 2k all over 2k factorial. And this power series we should know. This is just precisely equal to the hyperbolic cosine of u. So therefore, replacing u back with the square root of x, this is just the hyperbolic cosine of the square root of x. Right? So there's another function that's related to the Mittag-Leffler function. So you may want to continue this pattern, uh, such as Mittag-Leffler 4, Mittag-Leffler 5, Mittag-Leffler 6, or possibly the two-parameter Mittag-Leffler function, and see what kind of other interesting functions you might be able to 
um, generate just from this power series expansion. But of course it does require you to be able to identify um, power series of particular functions um, that you may or may not recognize. Some of them being elementary and some of them not being elementary primitives. Um, so it really depends on uh, what you can identify and what you cannot. So let us take uh, integrals of the Metagliflor function and see what happens there. So I'm going to define f alpha of x to be equal to the integral from 0 to x of the Metagliflor of alpha evaluated at minus t squared dt. Right? And you may want to see why uh, I want to evaluate this as minus t squared, and that should become clear in just a moment. So let's do an example with this particular function. So I'm going to uh, figure out what is f of 0 of x. So this is going to be equal to the integral from 0 to x of metagliflor of 0 minus t squared dt. So replacing metagliflor 0 with its power series representation, this is just going to be equal to the integral from 0 to x of the sum from k is equal to 0 to infinity of minus t squared all to the power of k dt. So you may start to see why I want to have that negative inside of that evaluation, because then I get an alternating series, right? So this is going to be equal to the sum from k is equal to 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the power of k. And then we're going to have, let's see here, then we're going to have the integral from 0 to x of t to the power of 2k dt. And then we can integrate that with a fundamental theorem uh, with no issue. So this is going to be equal to the sum from k is equal to 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the power of k. And then if we increase the power by 1, we get uh, 2k plus 1. And then we have t to the 2k plus 1. And we need to evaluate this as t goes to x and as t goes to 0. And t goes to 0, just 0. So we're just left with that x to the 2k plus 1 term there. Right? So this is just going to be equal to the sum from k is equal to 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the power of k, and then we have x to the 2k plus 1 all over 2k plus 1. So this is again f0 of x. Now this series should look familiar. This is precisely the arc tangent function. So now we have another uh, important function uh, that we studied a lot back in um, differential and integral calculus, right? So let's do another one. So example 5. So let us consider f2 of x. So it's going to be the same exact definition for f. So this is going to be equal to the integral from 0 to x of Metagliflor of 2 uh, evaluated at minus t squared dt. So again I'm going to replace the Metagliflor 2 with its power series representation. So that's just going to be the integral from 0 to x. So I'm k is equal to 0 to infinity minus t squared uh, to the power of k, all divided by gamma 2k plus 1. All right? So this 2 is coming from the parameter of Metagliflor. Okay. So again, we have this alternating series, so I'm just going to withdraw that out. So sum from k is equal to 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the power of k times the integral from 0 to x, t to the power of 2k, and on the bottom, uh, gamma 2k plus 1 is the same as 2k, the quantity factorial, uh, dt. Okay. So now I'm going to use our fundamental theorem of calculus uh, just as we did before. So that's going to be the sum from k is equal to 0 to infinity, minus 1 to the power of k, 1 over 2k, the quantity factorial, 1 over 2k plus 1, times t to the 2k plus 1, evaluated as t goes to x and as t goes to 0. So if we sort of look here, we have 2k and then 2k plus 1. So if we, we can combine that into 2k plus 1, the quantity factorial, right? So this is just going to be precisely the sum from k is equal to 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the power of k. Again, same thing happens with this right-hand term. That's going to be equal to x to the 2k plus 1 all over 2k plus 1, the quantity factorial. 
So this is indeed an odd function, and which odd function is it? So we see that f2 of x is precisely the sine function. So that's nice. So notice that we did skip over f of 1, we did f of 0 and f of 2. Uh, so let's just come back to uh, f of 1, figure out what that is. Right? So it's a little different, but it's not too difficult. So f1 of x, by definition, is going to be the integral from 0 to x of metagliflor 1, evaluated at minus t squared dt. And you can use this trick for actually um, f of 0 and also f of 2. So recall, what is metagliflor 1? So metagliflor 1 of x was equal to e to the x, right? So we can actually use this here and just evaluate e to the x at minus t squared, right? So this is just going to be equal to the integral from 0 to x of e to the x evaluated at x is equal to minus t squared dt. So this is going to be equal to the integral from 0 to x of e to the minus t squared dt. So this is f1 of x. So as we should already know, uh, this function is uh, not an elementary function in terms of its integral. Uh, in particular, it's a Gaussian integral, uh, so it's related to the normal distribution function. So another thing that you should remember from basic probability theory is that the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus x squared dx is equal to the square root of pi over 2, and that's very easy to prove via polar coordinates. So from this integral, we can get that this is going to be 2 over the square root of pi times the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus x squared dx is equal to 1. So we get that representation. So instead of going to infinity in terms of this Gaussian curve, right? So this is a Gaussian curve, so it sort of decays to infinity. So instead of going from 0 to infinity, our integral goes from 0 to x, right? For this particular function, 2 over square root of pi times e to the minus x squared, right? So let's just write that. So this curve is 2 over the square root of pi times e to the minus x squared y is equal to, right? And some people call this the error function, right? So this is the error function. So therefore, we can rewrite this function, f1 of x, is going to be equal to, so I want that 2 over square root of pi, uh, integral 0 to x e to the minus t squared dt. So I'm sort of introducing this 2 over square root of pi term, so I need to multiply that by the square root of pi over 2. Um, therefore, f1 of x is just equal to the square root of pi over 2 times the error function of x. So just based on the Mittag-Leffler function, we have hyperbolic functions, exponential functions, rational functions, error functions, you know, pretty much all your basic functions uh, that we have dealt with in the past, you know, arc, tangent, uh, and many more. So what does that mean about the Mittag-Leffler functions? It's related to all our special functions uh, that we know. We also have analyzed this from the perspective of just the function and also its integrals. So what about the derivatives of Mittag-Leffler functions? So we're not going to answer that question here. We're going to wait until the next video to do that. And then you may start to see where the connection of Mittag-Leffler functions actually lead with respect to our discussion on fractional calculus. Hope you enjoyed. As always, if you enjoyed, please like this video, consider leaving a comment, and if you enjoy the channel content, please subscribe. We publish several new topics every single week. Thank you.